we've got a new intake manifold that we're introducing, and for, for a little bit, if you look at it, you think this is out of the box thinking for MSD uh, to come up. How does MSD come up with an intake manifold? But as we look at systems and fuel injection and throttle bodies and the ECUs, this makes absolute sense for MSD. So. Uh, the, the LS engine is one of the most popular swap engines going on right now. Uh, we all know that. That is the new small block Chevy. And, uh, but there, there's some horsepower that's left on the table on the intake manifold design. So uh, we partnered with the right team, uh, came out with some ideas of what we wanted. We knew that we needed to make more horsepower uh, than other aftermarket intakes that are out there. And uh, so we put our heads together and, and uh, came to, came up with a design that, uh, that proved out in the end to be a very, very good intake design. So I'd like to introduce to the media our Atomic Air Force intake manifold for LS engines and first to market for the LT1 Corvette engine over here. So we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. So we've got a polymer intake manifold here uh, design. We work very hard. Uh, in increasing the plenum volume, the overall plenum volume itself, and opening these things up, uh, eliminating any of the restriction and obstructions. Uh, the architectures for LS1, 2, 6, LS3, LS7, and then the LT1s. Uh, it was designed using computational fluid dynamics, so we had modeling that was done before this thing ever ran on the dyno that said that it would outperform anything on the market. So obviously ne next you've got to go test and make sure that that's true. So uh, we did that. Joe, go ahead and pull the uh, top off this. It's got a, you can see it's got a two-piece uh, design, and that two-piece design allows you to uh, port it from the bottom. You can actually port the runners from the bottom and port it from the top. The, the runners itself, we work very hard on, on the design of the runners to straighten these runners out, to make them as straight as possible and increase the size. You can actually see the valve from the end of the, of the runner. The, uh, we, we also worked to make sure the air, on the airflow between the opposing runners and to make sure that the airflow going over the top of the runner was equal to the airflow going under the bottom of the runner. So there's, there's not any pockets of air. It's, it's very equally distributed and maximizes the airflow. We worked on the, uh, the bell mouth design uh, on the runners in here. So that bell mouth has been opened up, it's been massaged, it's been, uh, it's been uh, unshrouded to allow the maximum amount of air to go through the whole thing to get the air flowing through the intake manifold. The, uh, uh, Joe, get the top piece, Joe. Uh, in addition, in addition to that, there's nitrous ports uh, directly. Bosses are already added into the intake manifold design. It's got a 103 millimeter opening on the intake opening. It'll fit any aftermarket uh, or stock throttle body. Will bolt directly in place on there. It's got three map sensor locations, so you can actually relocate the map sensor to wherever it fits in your application on doing the engine install. And it's got a provision for EGR. So we've actually uh, uh, submitted our, our information uh, to CARB. Uh, we have been received our test letter, so the CARB EO is pending on this intake design. It uses uh, molded uh, reusable seals. So show the bottom, Joe. So you get these seals here, which can be taken off. These are these are specific to it. And then also look at the seals on the uh, around the ports. We actually we don't seal just the port. We seal around the bolt holes themselves, and those are reusable seals. Okay. Um, you have the option for the mechanical throttle cable. So this will work with the uh, with electronic throttle bodies or with mechanical throttle body blade itself. You can run, have, we'll have the mounting bracket for the for the cable and uh, fuel rails on the, on the top, Joe. On your fuel rails, this will work with stock fuel rails, just like this, uh, or it works with the Atomic LS uh, fuel injection system. It's got the, the specific rails dedicated for it. It will fit both. Uh, on the LS1 and LS6, though, so it does need to use an LS2-3 fuel rail design. So. We've done all this work, we've 
we, you know, we, we increased the airflow, we did all the stuff, so, so the question was, does it work? Uh, the first thing we did was, was we ran it on uh, RLS7 at, at, uh, at MSD on our, on our uh, Superflow dyno, we have an SF902 dyno, and um, we were very impressed with the results, but we didn't think anybody would believe us. <laughs> So the, we said we need to, we need to get somebody else. We need a third-party validation of the results that we saw. Uh, so we partnered with our friends at Lingenfelter. We got Mike Copeland and Ken Lingenfelter over there. Uh, they partnered with us and uh, to verify our, our performance. And uh, on on their LS7, on uh, a mild Lingenfelter LS7 that had a cam and, and, and headers, uh, we made we made 22 horsepower over a stock intake and 25 foot-pounds of torque, and we made eight horsepower and eight foot-pounds of torque over a ported version of the uh, of the uh, aftermarket intake that's available right now. Uh, then they decided to take it to the chassis dyno on their L28 Camaro that's got their, their highly modified, aggressive LS7, big cam, big cubic engines, uh, uh, good exhaust on it. And on the chassis dyno at the rear wheels, we made 36 horsepower and uh, 16 foot-pounds of torque over a modified competitive intake manifold. So uh, the bigger the cubic inches, the uh, more aggressive the engine, the more airflow required, this is where this engine comes to life. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's not specific in one area. We're not, we're not giving up just horsepower. You're gaining torque and you're gaining, and you're gaining horsepower both. So it's across the band. Alex. So, uh, so the next one was the LT1. So we've got the LS, we cover all versions. This is going to be available uh, at the uh, end of January. All the LS models will be shipping end of January. So that moved us on to the LT1. Uh, again, we're first to market on that. We copied all the same things, all the principles that we did on the LS, we did on the LT1, uh, working on the airflow, working on the long runners, straightening the runners out. Uh, all that physics went into that design, and uh, we were able to chassis dyno this on, uh, on our 1,000 horsepower Superflow chassis dial at MSD on Tuesday morning, we made 17 horsepower and 12 foot-pounds of torque uh, over the stock intake, which is the only thing out there. On a stock engine, bolt-on, no retuning whatsoever. So uh, we're excited about the opportunities on the LT1 because we know when those engines start being modified, uh, start getting bigger camshafts, uh, more fuel going through them, this thing's really going to come alive. Uh, pricing. Uh, all of the LS intakes will retail for $949.95, and the LT1 is $1,099. So, um, so whether you need power for your LS or your LT1, you know, our slogan is, call in the Air Force. <laughs>